everyone has their own skill sets, not comparing yourself is one other thing that I would say as well. And um, probably going back to that lessons learned, that is something that I would def definitely offer that you all have our individual, let's say, paths and goals. Definitely look to learn from some of the things they say, but I very much like to learn from other people and not see that um, you have to copy and paste someone else's career path. You've got your own one. You can take advice and learn from others, but the major thing is carving that out for yourself and seeing what skills you have, looking back through yourself, what values do you hold and what actually makes you tick, what makes you get up and go and work through things um, and those aspects. So yes, yeah, so And welcome to Career Spotlight with Vanessa Adjamine. Um, It's been quite a while, so I hope you're looking forward to it. Um, if you're new here, basically what we do is we have people from all walks of life. They come and pretty much share their career journey. You might get some tips, pointers about some decisions that you can take and eye-opening information around different industries and things like that. So today I have with me Isaac. Alawode and Isaac is a dynamic program manager at Collins Aerospace with a proven track record across the project life cycle. So he holds a first class master's in aeronautical engineering from the University of Brighton. Isaac combines technical ex expertise with strategic insights in project and operations management. His role in leading key initiatives, coupled with his dedicated dedication to STEM outreach as a STEM ambassador, um, he also showcases his commitment to innovation and community impact. So, Isaac, um, thank you so much for agreeing to come and share kind of like your career journey. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me on. Cool. So normally we kind of want to get to know you a bit more, like tell us kind of what you do right now. Sure, no problem. Yes, so I'm a program manager at Collins Aerospace. So right now I'm about, I'm starting to work on, let's say, quite a, a major program, which effectively has set objectives in terms of goals we have to meet in terms of for the business and for our customer, but has incorporation a number of projects that sit beneath that as well that help us to achieve the program set objectives to cost, um, to time and schedule and those aspects. So there's a set requirements within that. So within my role, if you like, I lead quite a, a significant team that have, each of them have their own, let's say, exp expertise and SMEs in regarding to supporting the project. So I overall have full accountability for the program. However, I have a number of team who are very much key individuals that support the program, ensuring that we meet with our customer needs and also the business strategic objectives. Cool. So that sounds quite interesting. Did your studies prepare you for what you do now? Yes, both sort of directly and indirectly. If I say <laughs> directly first, so I did an engineering degree, specifically aeronautical engineering. So I do work in the aerospace industry, which when I was younger, I always say wanted to do that in various different ways. I had a keen interest for aerospace but if you say my degree background itself is not uh my degree is technical if you like whereas what I do now isn't so much very technical which is where my first few years of my university degree were more focused on the technical aspects of aeronautical engineering so very much analysis and design and the maths and all those aspects that feed in which I don't have to do so much of now but when I did my final year which was um in between my plate after my placement year at GE I did an MEng, which is a final year of, um, of the degree, which is where you do more project based. So um, there was a major team project we had to work on, which sort of feeds into some things that say do now, if you like, preparing me for that. So it really did prepare me in terms of going into industry whereby you work on live projects. And then when we did a project at uni, it was incorporation of a, a company, a local company. And now, if you say things I have to work with, of course, internally with the company, but also other organizations, if you like, or should I say customers who are of course external to where we work directly. So that helped me in terms of my um, degree, in terms of preparing me, in terms of some of my leadership skills, 
working with people, which I very much like to do. So in different ways, it did help me. And there's other ways in which I have transferable skills, if you like, which have been very positive and helpful for me as well. Cool. Um, I know that you also mentioned about um, working at GE. So with that internship, like, how did you go about securing um, that internship with GE? And do you have any tips for um, upcoming, like, undergrads? Yes, no, sure. So at the time, um, throughout my degree, if you like, going into engineering, I'd always been encouraged that, look, if you want to let's say get into the industry post graduation is always important to have a placement year to get some experience so at the time after my second year actually I'd applied for a number of, in, of internships and didn't actually get one that year um there was yeah. one I was potentially about to be offered but I didn't get one then so I looked to carry on my study so I went into my third year and decided I would do a master's so I'd do the fourth year as well but in the third year I then applied again um, for different roles and then wanted it to be say in aerospace because the other ones that I'd looked at before they weren't I didn't get say one that was going to be in aerospace so mm -hmm. I'd applied for a GE um, and really the strategies to say I employed was first applying to a number so not banking <laughs> myself on just getting the one but yeah. also working with our careers in terms of sorting out a CV that would show my enthusiasm because I guess mm -hmm. but you've got to look at it especially going for an internship especially which is a, the entry level role you won't have had experience, which is okay. The main thing I, I suggest is about showing your enthusiasm. Why is it that you want to apply? Some um, understanding of, say, what the company is, um, show some reasons as to why it is that you're interested in, in that and what you look to, say, get out of it. And having all those, let's say, in your back pocket, as it were, that fits in with what, say, degree you're doing, which they may not necessarily have to be related to what you're going into, but showing that, look, you want to have a developer career, in this case, for me, stay in engineering and aerospace, um, but wider than that, what skills and transferable skills you may have that will be useful for it and being confident in going prepared, if you like, for the interview um, and showing that uh, as part of, you say, your studies, you really want to develop um, yourself into getting into the industry post um, graduation as well. I know that uh, you mentioned like not just putting your eggs in one basket. What was it like an easy decision from when? from deciding to do like your master's as opposed to, I guess, going out into industry and working? Yes, so that's actually a very good question. So um, I guess there's a few ways, um, parts of this. So when I was um, studying, there was parts of me actually, I didn't actually fully know what I wanted to do. So at the end of say my second, third year, I'd done a lot of, of course, um, things with um, in engineering, different subjects, design, stress, uh, maths, all these different things. And I was very much, um, let's say, getting some success in sort of exams and things, but mm -hmm. very much thinking post uni, what is it that I want to do? So I wasn't fully sure um, at that time, um, but I did know I wanted to be in, say, an engineering and aerospace. So it helped me actually having that additional year, um, really going towards the master's, knowing that I eventually would want to do a master's, but doing one that was more general rather than specific, because I knew say I finished uni after my third year or went to industry and came out, I maybe do something that's more specific, but I wanted to do a more general, let's say within aerospace, which is mm. specific, I guess, subject, but more yeah. general, which is what the MNG sort of year offers you. So mm -hmm. it really helped me um, doing that um, and ensuring that I had a broad range and more understanding and more knowledge um, and uh, really helped me to learn more. So some, even though like you did mention that you had an interest in like obviously aerospace given your um, educational background uh, and your interests as well um someone might be thinking though so what what if you other opportunities came out outside of that industry at the time or was or was that a kind of non-negotiable for you I, I'll be very honest that it was yeah. I wouldn't say it was a non-negotiable I would very much say yeah. my heart was set on being in aerospace when I'd applied yeah. for graduate jobs I applied for a range again at that time mm. I'd seen so briefly touching on my internship it was sort of project management within engineering which was helpful for me in terms of what I do now but I was very much um, of the view that look all experience in a way is good experience so I was happy yeah. to spread my net wide and be like if there's other opportunities that would be viable that would support um, say my career development and progression that I would go for them and not say look Unless it's aerospace, I'm not going to do it. But yeah. I'm very grateful for the opportunities that have come for me, that they have mm -hmm. been in an industry that I wanted to be in. But I yeah. very much saw it that um, not to 
not to limit yourself and yeah. just really cast that net wide mm -hmm, definitely so can you kind of talk through what that process looked like in securing the role for Collins um yes sure so uh, upon applying for Collins Aerospace um, at, at the time I, I remember uh, quite a number of years now ago of course <laughs> but uh, there was an exam sort of like um must be the the competency sort of exams that you do or psychometric yeah. that's it psychometric exams that you do that test your maths and english i remember doing those um and then after there was sort of an assessment center which we had which was a, a day long in which had you had your group activities and you had your interview and all sorts with that and then i remember that being uh, i guess quite an interesting process in amongst doing exams and things so at the time it was quite a bit of pressure on it but i remember applying for that in that way and i say remember now and some of the things in the interview i remember saying things of, about my interest of um drawing upon the time i spent at ge and how that's led me to where i say i was at that time and what sort of things being on, honest that i wasn't fully sure where i wanted to go to be let's say at a certain time um although i had some ideas but also saying that look i really want to develop in an area that um let's say it's more general so the role itself was sort of a graduate scheme where you'd rotate mm. around different departments and that was something that suited me there were other roles I applied for that weren't so much that but I really wanted to something that you'd get a broad range of um, different aspects within the organization different departments and then be able to let's say streamline potentially into one area or or, or eventually focus on one part so it was very much um, a positive for me and why I looked to apply for a company like Collins and uh, wants to be to be successful in that interview and beyond. Sure. And during kind of like your early years, what specific skills did you focus on developing? Yeah, so I think um, working, team working and really um, working with people as a whole is a very much a skill that I've, I've been able to develop uh, as long as well as my soft skills. Um, which has helped as well as presentation as well. So being able to be in, say, in a press situation or let's say a presentation situation whereby you have to present a status, um, that's been something I've had to develop and being able to deliver the right message, both written and oral. And actually thinking ahead of questions that may be asked is something that I've had to continuously do because if you're going to prepare for a review in one sense or another, it can't just be what you want to present there. It's almost thinking what other people that are looking at it how do they perceive it thinking on the outside of what other people think and I think that's a key skill because you're always thinking ahead now you're not always going to get it right in terms of knowing what people will think but if you spend that time um, thinking of what that might be or even making use of other people to review and things it really helps you to be prepared and I was saying thinking of the same before um, about um, poor planning and preparation prevents pretty poor performance so really preparing for um, a situation that you may be in really helps you and uh, I think as well being able to be have the ability to be accountable or responsible for an environment for a particular piece of work so something I very much encourage sort of um, young apprentices or graduates to be is that take a more responsibility than maybe your role may be in that at that particular time so when I was a graduate there was um, opportunities that I was given that um, there were professionals that uh, had been in industry for a while, they were doing them, but I was given some opportunities to work in some of those similar environments, which meant that once I came off the scheme and I was fully accountable and responsible for a particular piece of work, I'd, I'd experienced that in my, say, training years. So those are some of the skills that I would say I developed in being to where I am now. And so while you did your rotational grad scheme, did you kind of fall into program management afterwards or was it like a strategic decision so uh, it's too far actually again if I draw back to when I had my internship which was project management within engineering but I think at the time I didn't fully accept that look this is where I say some of my skills lay or where I would really enjoy so then within the grad scheme um, I had done a rotation in uh, operations management um, which I spent a year doing that and I really enjoyed it I was actually during COVID which was a very interesting and difficult time and I enjoyed working with people and, and managing say sort of uh, people at the time and working that through um, but then after that I did another I did a short rotation of say nine months or so um, in sort of supply chain slash program management which um, helps me actually then after that to say look is this something that I really want to do and I spoke to a number of mentors um, and spoke to a number of people 
And uh, so it, it, it turned out to be a decision, not so much strategically that I should fall into, say, program manager, but something that mm -hmm. after evaluating all my skills, it was like, well, this is something that's almost screaming out to you and you've got to see that <laughs> you are you can enjoy it. And there's challenge in it, of course, but there's so mm -hmm. much room for growth. Um, so then an opportunity came up within that, which I was then successful to start my, say, uh, let's say full career working in program management, which has been for the last number of years. So, yes. Sure. And within your role, what kind of systems or tools do you use? Yes. Um, so within project management itself, so um, stuff like Microsoft Projects, which is a software itself in terms of um, developing a schedule, which has some aspects of costs and things of that, like that in there. Of course, using Excel, um, which has been helpful in terms of either developing some aspects of budgeting um, and different elements there, um, but also making use of the team, so there's like risk management tooling and other aspects which have been developed by our program management office that really help, let's say, bring the whole program or project together in ensuring you've got the different tools and different facets that help you either control your project or ensure you know the status of um, where you're at at any one time and be able to present that and explain where bits are which is supportive of the team sure and with some of these systems such as ms project was it self-taught or how did you go about learning how to use those tools so there have been some training that i've had with it but the very much the element of i've always been encouraged to do is almost just to get thrown in and stuck in at it because yeah. there's so many different bits that you let's say, develop um, just by, uh, let's say, failing fast, if you like, with it, or trying to problem solve within that, which is a key skill, um, not just say in program project management, but throughout. And I think that's where I've really helped develop my use of Microsoft product. There's still plenty uh, to go. And I was having some training recently um, that was helping refine some skills, but there's so much more for me to learn. And it's, again, being enthusiastic to learn there. So I think there's an element of you really wanting to just get thrown in and stuck in there, but also making use of sometimes videos and things that if you've got a particular problem or error that you're um, that you're finding and also speaking to people that are SMEs or that have worked with the software for a while have been helpful for myself um, in using it so I think getting stuck in in anger is my biggest recommendation <laughs> for it but um, yeah. some training can also supplement that as well. Sure and when it comes to like leading successful programs how do you go about tracking its progress um, towards achieving its objective yes so there's a few different ways so talking about schedule of adherence so um often within the months of project i'll say managing some well last 18 months or so uh, recently about uh, moving off and we reached a major milestone on and um, it was very much important for us to track our schedule so in the schedule that we had within microsoft project we knew sort of month by month what it is that we were looking to achieve and whether we'd achieved it or not was, of course, our success measure in that respect. But that also depend on how major that particular milestone was. So the more major milestones, um, we would say, be quite important for us to track and see that, OK, look, have we been successful within this? And if not, OK, what are we going to do about it? If there's any risk in actually achieving it and trying to alleviate those risks um, in advance. Similarly, with our costs. So. We had a budget, if you like, but that also was split into different work packages or different elements um, whereby, let's say, almost month for month as well, but also throughout would be like, okay, is there a risk that we may go over budget in this particular area? But also then looking at our estimate of complete, as they say, our EAC, what does that look like each month and tracking towards that as well? So there's been those um, different aspects of, um, let's say, uh, um, adherence that we've been able to look at and ensure that we're tracking um, to ensure it's successful. But in amongst that as well, our sort of um, market, feedback market feedback analysis. So looking at the customer in terms of what they think of where we are currently working to, what bits can we look to improve, some customer intelligence, which has been supportive in another program that I've worked on to help and see that, okay, look, are you happy with what we're doing at the minute? Or is there some aspects that you pinpoint and see that's important as a measure of success for yourselves? also working with the team as well to ensure we meet those successfully sure someone might be thinking that okay i've heard that program management um is a good career and a good like has great opportunities but then they might wonder is is it is it a career that's interesting is it is it something that has like a lot to offer 
in terms of the variety of how things work? Yes, no, it is a very important and interesting question there. And I think I would say 100% it is interesting. And the biggest thing for me in it is that is the variety. So as I say, in working in program management, you have accountability for the full um, program itself. So that could be in terms of engineering wise or aerospace, we have a, to do with the cost. It could be to do with the schedule, it could be to do um, with the customer, it could be to do with quality, it could be to do with a global trade issue, it could be to do with engineering. There's so many different aspects and facets that you um, are accountable or important for. You're not responsible for those sometimes facets of those. You've got um, different SMEs within that, but the different elements that are within that, sometimes you have to decide what the priority is at that particular time you have to focus on. So there's almost no two days as such are the same, but not just saying that as a flippant comment, it genuinely is the case whereby there's some things that are predictable that stay the same, but there's something that can emerge um, that you uh, have to particularly work through. Different programs and projects have different priorities or different issues. For example, supply chain might be something that you've got to work with the team and develop and increase and, and develop on. It could be your cost base, either whether it's the budget or whether it's your recurring cost of what you're selling at and what then of course the profit margin and those aspects that might be that's important of course for the project and the business so I think it's very much in uh, a very broad range that means that you have to be I say quite dynamic in being interested in various different things but also knowing that you don't have to know everything it's about working with the team to ensure that you all um, go towards a common goal set that vision set those goals objectives towards what you're going to be working with and ensuring that you have your team on board and say the team I very much enjoy collaboration and working with people. So if there's something that you enjoy as such with there, then program management is something that offers you that fully, but in various different ways. As I say, with different projects as well, there's different, there's some which have a defined start and end that you're working with. There's some that are more business as usual projects um, as such, which are uh, well more different in respect to something that you're trying to remain consistent with. So there's the various different things there. Sure. Have there been any specific training or um courses that you've done that have helped yes so, so more recently um the apm association of project management um they have um, different levels um and more recently in doing the project management qualification the pmq which teaches you a number of different um advance from the fundamentals some of the things of project management which come from in incorporating how managing a team the different phases that you may go through with managing a new team um, conflict management, so a lot of soft skills elements, but also some technical aspects in terms of with your schedule and also risk management, all the different things that incorporate um, program management. There's been some training that I've had, which have been more and more, more useful for myself in terms of incorporating day to day. There's not every aspect you use each day, but there's some aspects which you use more than others. So uh, that's been really good for me. And then I've done some other things on like crucial conversations, which again, links in with conflict management. So developing my soft skills whenever you may have a situation because I think soft skills are one of the most important things that you definitely have within project management where you have to influence people um, towards re meeting a common goal. Sure. Um, do you think it comes like easy to manage a team or naturally to you? Uh, I would say there's two parts. It, there's, I wouldn't say it comes easy. It comes natural in the respect of that I enjoy it. Um, now, I very much, there's challenges that we also always have, but I very much enjoy working with people. So I'd see it as something that say within my skill set that um, I enjoy doing. So it is something that comes more natural to me than, let's say, if I was only needing to work just with myself. I very much yeah. can work just on my own, when yeah. need, but also work with the team in terms of me and that. So I'd say it comes more natural in that respect, yes. Sure. So as a STEM ambassador, what inspired you to become one and what exactly does it entail? Yes, so as a STEM ambassador, sort of the reason why I wanted to become one, if you like, and this is incorporated from when so I was in uni and even before then, um, was because I very much like to encourage people and um, motivate, but also uh, mentor people in terms of encouraging them in terms of their career paths. And of course, you say bias in respect of them, um, say enjoy engineering and engineering, <laughs> but I very much want to pass on, let's say, knowledge and things that I've had and I've learned in terms of helping other people, in terms of navigating where they may they want to make which way they want to go. I had, had similar things myself, and I always feel that 
knowledge should be passed on and not hoarded. It's not for myself to have, it's for others to benefit from that and really um, develop from it. And one of my sort of values, a sort of encouragement, growth and learning and passing that on is also a part of that. So I very much wanted to have a sphere um, uh, an element that means that I'm very much a uh, let's say, encourager of people to join the, let's say, the area of STEM, but also feel that they're not contained to whatever specific subject they may study. But seeing that it's such a broad range, it offers so much more than just what that subject is. Whereas even if that what that subject is maybe important, there's more that it offers as well. So that's some of the reasons why I sort of wanted to encourage um, within that sphere. Sure. And how uh, how exactly like do you go about trying to spark young people's interests in like STEM? Yes. So there's been a few different spheres uh, um, within work at Collins and there's various issues. I haven't done it for so much in a while, but I very much mm-hmm. still like to get involved with it. Um, I've supported on things like interview prep um, for school that was done um, for a few times, which was very helpful in terms of encouraging them to first not be nervous throughout the process, be okay <laughs> within that, but also see that they can um, have their own skills that they've got to develop and bring across. But also encouraging people, whether it's through schools and other means, um, showing what options you have, let's say, throughout university and beyond, or not even necessarily just university, what skills and things that may come from learning a STEM subject, what, how fascinating the world is as a whole in terms of um, uh, studying a STEM subject, but also further than that. So those are some of the things that I've done personally myself. Sure. And like so far, um, <clears throat> if if you look back, what are like some of your key lessons learned, do you think? I'm sorry, say that again. Key lessons learned. I think the one of the few, I've got a few. Um, one of them is not fearing fearing failure. So I remember early in my career, especially when I was a graduate, it was thinking, oh, you may get things wrong or that sort of thing, which is OK. Um, it's OK to get things wrong. But the biggest thing is actually learning from it by being open to learn from any mistakes you make, but also actually just trying, putting yourself out there and throwing yourself there. I think that's been a big lessons learned for myself. And then also um, taking or listening to other people. So I think um, having mentors and um, people that can offer you advice and support has been a great lessons learned for myself in the respect that just ask, being able to ask people questions candidly about different things, what their thoughts are, who have people that have been more experienced than you um, has been very useful to myself. But then also, again, throwing yourself at, at challenges, just just trying has been a great lesson learned for myself because more has come from those that I even ever imagined um, even where I am now, some of the projects and programs I work, didn't wouldn't see myself have done them years ago. But being able to work with um, some projects, but also then have key people support them and sponsor you in the respect of believing you, having faith in you has been a real benefit to myself. Um, so really making use of your network has been important and never, never burning any bridges is something I always encourage people. Um, there's always support there that you offer people in the same way people offer you support and, and help develop you. Sure. Do you have any final words? Yes. Uh, I guess only a few things I'd probably say is if you are, say, looking to study a STEM subject or even work in program management, I'd probably say definitely something that I would recommend myself in terms of, of trying it. I'd be able to recommend people, of course, reach out to me on LinkedIn or those means if um, you do want any offer, help and support. I would very much like to encourage people. And I think, as I say, one of the biggest things is actually just trying and seeing where that goes. There's so much that comes with making an effort and working with people and to reach a common goal that's so important. That I think that everyone has their own skill sets, not comparing yourself is one other thing that I would say as well. And um, probably going back to that lessons learned, that is something that I would def- definitely offer that you all have our individual, let's say, paths and goals. Definitely look to learn from some of the things I say, but I very much like to learn from other people and not see that um, you have to copy and paste someone else's career path. You've got your own one. You can take advice and learn from others, but the major thing is carving that out for yourself and seeing what skills you have, looking back through yourself, what values do you hold and what actually makes you tick, what makes you get up and go and work through things um, and those aspects. So, yes, those are my final words, if you like. Right, that's been really good. Um, thank you so much for your time. I'm sure that people watching um, or listening will definitely be able to 
take some pointers for their careers as well. Sure. Thank you again, Les, for having me on. It's been great. Thank <laughs> you.